And shout out to our new sponsor, Shopify. Shopify is much more than a store. Much more. Connect with your customers, drive sales, manage your day to day. Go to shopify.com slash funches, all lower case and start your free trial and get full access to shopify's entire suite of features grow your business with shopify today go to shopify.com slash funches right now that's shopify.com slash funches thanks for sponsoring it's about Thanks for listening to the podcast. Thanks for watching it. If you do on YouTube, we're creeping ever closer to 25,000 followers. And that might not be much for others, but it's a lot to me and I want it. So please go ahead, click that link, subscribe to it, watch the podcast, see my full special giggle fit on YouTube is on my channel and much more things I'm continuing to add and put on and really it does you no harm. Just go out there and hit the button. Subscribe to this account on YouTube. It helps us grow, puts us out there, lets the people see our clips. We would love it. You can also rate and subscribe to the podcast. Don't forget to five star us like we're an Uber and we dropped you off safely and carefully in front of your house. And even after you left your earphones, we brought them back to you. That's what we do here at the podcast. So give us five stars. We don't even need a tip. But if you want to, come on over to twitch.tv, Ron underscore Funches, where you can subscribe up, watch me play video games, join the Funch Bunch, become part of the Discord, where we hang out. We talk and watch movies. We watch TV shows. We watch UFC events. We're hanging out together. And then you're the first, if you're in the Funch Bunch Discord, you would be the first in line to know about things. Things like the high society show that I do, uh, when I'm going on tour, where I'm going to be at, and just what I'm doing in my life. If you want to know all the behind the scenes stuff, like if you wanted to know that I was on Celebrity Wheel of Fortune months ago, you would have known that if you hang out in the Discord. Join the Funch Bunch Discord. Go to twitch.tv, Ron underscore Funches, and then watch me play video games on Twitch. And watch Harley Quinn. We had our season finale. So all the episodes are out on HBO Max, as well as all the episodes on Loot are out on Apple TV+. Plus. So go ahead and please check that out. That would be rude of you not to do that. Uh, <laughs> and I'm coming on the road again. I'm doing a few shows. I'm going to be in Indianapolis, Indiana at the Helium Comedy Club and I will be there October 13th through the 15th. So if you're in the Indiana area, just make the trip. Come see me. I see you Bloomington. Take the drive. I know it's long, but come on out. And then October 27th through the 29th, I know you're going to want to be there when I'm at the Capital City Comedy Club with Austin, Texas with Miss Blair Saki herself. And then November 12th, I will be at the Flyover Comedy Festival in St. Louis, Missouri. November 17th and 18th, I will be in Chicago, Illinois at Zany's with Laura Peak. So if you want to take a peek at Peak Funches, come on out to Chicago. We're going to have a great time. Anything else I need to promote that I'm unaware of? Uh, nothing that I can see. Lou, Harley Quinn, uh, this podcast, Twitch, come on out, hang out, join the Funch Bunch universe. It's a wonderful time. Now let's get ready for the show. I hope you're feeling strong. I hope you're feeling brave. Ooh, I hope you're feeling love today. If you are feeling love, Lord knows I hope you recognize it, that you're aware of it, that you don't take it for granted, and that you're grateful for that love. A lot of people chasing it, hunting it, looking for it. Uh, and I hope if you if you got happiness and you found it in your life, that you're finding ways to share it with other people. Because for me, that's what this whole last week has been about. Me doing new things that I've been excited about that I never thought that I'd do. Like my wife and I went to our first Emmy party thanks to being on this Apple show. And I got to it's just really cool when you meet some people that you watched on TV and you've been heroes of yours and then they turn around 
And they don't talk to you like a fan. They don't talk to you like a, a somebody they don't know. They talk to you like they respect you. And I really appreciate that. And I, I don't like to be name dropping, but I got to say like Adam Scott, super cool dude. Uh, you know, he put, he's on loot as Maya Rudolph's ex-husband. And we all seen his work on Parks and Rec and Party Down. And I bet if I ask him, he might do this podcast. I never even thought about that. I'm going to figure that out. Uh, but I love Adam Scott, loved his work for years. And 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 just to uh, see him at that party and him be so cool and nice to me and then be nice enough to introduce me to Ben Stiller, who's a hero of mine and my wife's and a big uh, part of me and my wife getting together. It's been the beginning of our relationship. When, you know, when I had to spend the night, we would always pick out a Ben Stiller movie to watch. And it was a good time. I learned a lot of new Ben Stiller movies I didn't know about. I've always been a big fan of his father. Um, he's one of the my com- biggest influences as a character actor is Jerry Stiller. And uh, the way he commits everything and can make the most uh, wild and out there choices seem realistic and real. And I've always, and if you watch my work, that's kind of what I try to do is operate from this place of honesty that still lets you know that this guy's a little bit off because I am. And <laughs> so Jerry Stiller, a big, big hero of mine. And to be able to meet Ben and to shake his hand um, was a, it was a lot like if you watch Loot on Apple TV plus, it was a lot like that episode where Howard meets the billionaires. Cause I was like, you know what? This is a once in a lifetime chance. If I get a chance to meet one of my heroes, I'm going to go walk right up to them and shake their hands and tell them how much they mean to me. And, uh, he couldn't have been cooler about it. And I, it seemed like it actually meant something to him at least a little bit. So, uh, it's always good. You know, if you ever see me and I mean something to you, trust me, I want to hear about it because it would make me feel good. So, Got to do that. And it spread love to me. Him making that simple gesture um, was one of the biggest days of my life. And me and my wife will always remember that we met Ben Stiller and shook his hand. Um, And hopefully that led to a lifelong career where we did movies together where I played his son somehow. I don't know. (laughs) <laughs> but I, I can see it still happening oh, either way <laughs> then this last week would seem like about me being able to spread my joy and spread things that I have out to my friends we had a lot of the Funch Bunch people again if you go to twitch.tv Ron underscore Funches and you join the Funch Bunch and you join that discord we might end up actual friends because I had a bunch of members of the Funch Bunch come out uh this week for the high society show that i had which was this big show mixing some of the chefs from chop 420 uh with with some of these fine cannabis brands like wonder bread if you know he wonder bread's been on the show and he he was there sponsoring the event with some other people uh whose names i have currently forgotten but they were oh wonderful let me see real de- real deal resin i can't forget about you you don't you didn't even ask for a sponsor shop but if you like pro wrestling and weed like i do you know, there's two people mixing it. There's people, I mean, more assume it's more than two, but there's people really mixing those words together. And that is real deal resin. Check them out. They got a lot of things that are mixing weed and pro wrestling together. And it is beautiful. And they doing high quality work. So it's nice to meet you guys. Um, and so my friends came out and I was able, I got some free tickets to go to SmackDown and I was able to take them backstage and see their eyes light up as they met some of my friends like uh, Xavier Woods and Kofi Kingston. And I got to meet new people like Seamus and uh, Liv Morgan, who was super cool to my son and really um, was so sweet and connected with him and, and on a nice level that a lot of people don't get to because of him being on on the autism spectrum and um i always judge a person like who if they, you can connect with my son like that you gotta be you gotta have a good heart and kindness to you and be a really sweet person so Liv morgan i love you uh and it was just so cool to be able to share that 
experience with them and see their faces light up. Um, you know, we get people tickets to the comedy store and then have them come to this event, being able to mingle. Uh, Terry Hatcher popped by. I know it sounded real name droppy right now, but it was just what it was. And it was a beautiful life experience of like when you just want something to happen and the dream comes true for you. And it also a reminder of like, Love what you want to love and care about you care, but as long as you're not hurting anybody. It's just been a big journey for me smoking weed and behind the stage of a show where people threatening to not even let me in the venue because I smell like weed to now where I host a fine dining weed event that costs hundreds of dollars to attend to that Terry Hatcher shows up to and the best weed in the world is there and I'm smoking some weed and I got a jar of it of weed that ain't even out yet that don't even exist commercially that sound like growth and change to me i'm excited about that and excited about my life and just seeing everybody's faces light up with joy and that seems to be like my um reason to be on life is just try to connect people and and bring joy to people's lives and by that i get joy and i get um, benefits myself and it's uh you know it's a it's a weird life it's a different type of life but I really appreciate it and I love it and I wouldn't change it for the world um because I get to really go out there and be a merriment marauder I get to be a jester I get to be a mirth maker I'm out here to just try to bring smiles to people's faces and sometimes I'm not feeling the best sometimes I'm not doing as great as I would like to be um but I still try to go out there and do my job and do my duty and it's just really fun and now I'm just real tired and I feel like I'm going possibly get sick because I've done too much but either way it's just making lifelong memories. I'll never forget that night of eating duck confit tacos with Reggie Watts and Blair Saki while we listen to delicious, delicious music. <laughs> <laughs> it was a great time. And I hope we get to do another one. But even if we never do, the people who were there get to have that fun memory. And that's super cool. People were there for their wedding anniversary. People were there for their birthday. People came flew from from florida someone uh, people took the train from san diego it was an event people understood the value and that's what i love to do that's what i'm all about especially right now in a commercial landscape that seems to not pride um original ideas or um goofiness and optimism you know every fucking pitch i go try to do or how oh, could it be more edgy could it be more edgy could it be more, what the fuck does that even mean you don't even know what the fuck edgy means it just means curse words and balls to you that's not edgy being an adult making real decisions doing fucking things that you wouldn't do being a, a fucking heart forward person in a world full of knives that's edgy and uh, I just wish more people would get that sometimes. But I'm not meant for everybody, and that's okay. People don't understand it, and that's fine. I just follow people who I grew up loving, people Carol Burnett, Vicki Lawrence, uh, people who bring joy and happiness and optimism. And it, I don't think that ever goes out of style. I think that'll always be a classic Coke. And all these other flavors, they they come and they go, and that's fine. Um, I just hope you're doing something fun in your life that fills you with joy and that you're sharing that joy with other people and bringing joy into their life. Because if you're not, you not brewing trickle down economics, it don't work for most things, but it do work with joy and happiness and passing down things. And you can't be a hoarder just because you got stuff and stuff. It's like, you got to let things flow, flow through you and let share that happiness, share that joy, share those experiences because, um, you know, you'll get rewarded more. You know, I just feel better just from like watching my fa my friends faces when my friend got to hug Bailey or uh, just watching them as they're listening to music and stoned out of their minds while eating a Wagyu ribeye tater top hash. These are magical sentences. And 
um, they come from, you know, taking chances and me being open and me being free. And I just want to continue to push that and be all about that. And I learned that from the other people around me who do whatever they feel is right and not what they feel is popular or what they feel everybody else is doing to try to chase dollars. They do what they want and then it seems like things just come around for you. Like our guest today, comedian that I've known for as long as before I've been headlining, when I was co-headlining, Seattle, Washington, I was still married to my first wife. It was a horrible, it was a horrible weekend. I remember this. It was the weekend where I was like, we are not making it. This is certainly done. And uh, Shang was there to help me have fun and be positive force in my life. And now it's gone to see him go and have a great career and be one of the best comedians on the planet. And you can check out his new comedy special on Netflix, which is called Sweet and Juicy. Which is what it is. That is so sweet and it's full of juicy laughter. Check it out and then check out this episode with my dear friend Shang Wang. Enjoy it. Well, thanks for hooking up your stuff for us, Shang. I appreciate it. Of course, man. Thank you for having me. Um, sorry, this is this is my soundproof studio. I love it. Does it, does it sound okay? Yeah, everything's fine. Let me tell you, um, I start the podcast usually by telling people why I wanted them or what I like about them. And for you, that's a lot of things. Uh, uh, you're one of my favorite comedians, Shang. You're one of my favorite hangs as just a person. You're enjoyable to be around. Um, you make me think of things differently when I'm around you. You make me feel funny, which I enjoy as, as a person. It makes me feel good. Um, to this day, one of my favorite moments in my life, which is being with you in Seattle and talking about spices and you made me look at spices in a different way and talking about how people used to go to wars over it. Now we get to just have them willy nilly and we got to appreciate it. And that made me happy. You're the first person I ever co-headlined the show with. And so it just made me super happy to see that you had this Netflix special. Um, and just recently in my own world, I've always been like, oh, like I don't get to see the things that I enjoy. I don't get to see the things that make me as excited when I was a kid to watch comedy, the type of like Adam Sandler movies or the comedy. So when I see things that really make me happy and give me joy, I like I got to do whatever I can do to promote them. And so watching your special Sweet and Juicy on Netflix and just seeing it be just this source of joy and happiness and just just well-written craftsmanship. I just wanted to make sure I got a chance to talk about it and, you know, use whatever small amount of push I can to get people to go see it because I, I love you and I love your comedy. Oh, man. Thank you so much. That is so kind. Thank you, Ron. Um, yeah, it's been quite a journey. We've met. We've known each other for quite a while. Um, I remember buying those, I bought some, there's a spice store at the, at the Pike, whatever that place was in, in, in Seattle. And, um, yeah, man, I'm still cooking, dude. I'm still discovering new spices, dude. <laughs> <laughs> um, That's yeah. Yeah. What's the recent, well, my recent, re, most recent combination of spices that I found to be a powerful combo, um, dill weed and cumin. Hmm. You mix that together with um, some soy sauce or fish sauce and put that in some tofu and you're good to go, man. You're going to blow some minds. That sounds delicious. Yeah, I mean, it sounds exciting. I'm real into that. Oh, um, Talk to me a little bit about the special. How long have you been working on it? I mean, I saw you in Austin, Texas, and there was a few of that, a little bit of that material was was there, but a lot of it I had ne never heard before. Um, and just give me a little bit about the process of it and, and just how do you feel now that it's out? Because I feel like it's excellent. It's, it's, it's to me, one of those classic specials where it just showcases a person that who they are and they're, and they're best at that moment. And I feel like you really nailed it. So I just want to know how you feel about it. Oh, thanks, man. Um, yeah, the, I mean, um, it was kind of a long time, you know, 
I mean, it's been a while since I put out something. Um, and um, I'm sorry. There, 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 I think there's a leaf blower outside. Is, is, that, is that bothering anybody? Not here, nothing. Okay, good. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, so it was something I've been working on for a while. I ran into you in Austin. That was like July of last year, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, and before that, it's you know, this, this act has been something I've been trying to put together for a while. I mean, it wasn't really, you know... I would say like some of these jokes are as old as um, five, six years old. And some of them are as young as, you know, last year or Mm -hmm. this year. Um, But uh, it was, you know, before uh, earlier on, you're just kind of writing new jokes. You're just constantly trying to find new jokes. And that's really what the joy is for me. And this craft is just coming up with a new idea, a new thing, uh, uh, improving an old one or, or, or an ongoing one. You know the, the the craft is fun and exciting for me, and 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 the most rewarding part to me is just finding that new the next new one. Um, because you know for me, like I don't know, I'm still trying to understand what it is that I do. Um, but people seem to resonate and enjoy it, and I think I'm just trying to find life, a love, love and life, like in, in all those moments that we 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 we're not. I don't know. It's so easy to take for granted. Um. But yeah, so in the early on, I'm just trying to write new jokes, trying to understand things better around me, understand myself better, and and then once you start to, well, there was start there was talk of like, oh, maybe we can do an hour with some, a network or or Netflix or like one of these platforms. Then it starts, you know, you start to think about, oh, so if that's going to happen at some point in the near future, how would you, you know? What were you going to do? How are you going to get ready for it? And th- I think there's a tendency for people, for me, I was like, well, I, if it's going to be something special, I got to figure out like something special. Like I, 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 it would, it didn't occur to me that I could just, just do what I do for some reason. I, I, I was, I was going to sabotage myself by trying to change it all up or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, yeah, by the time we, you know, there was, there was like, we, we decided that if Ali might be on board um, to direct it, the conversation went to Netflix and we decided, and they were down to do it. Um, But then the pandemic came and it was like, well, I don't know. It might happen at some point. Um, But then around December of last year or this last year, eight months ago, whatever, like we decided that we we locked down a a time and a place. And then once that, once that happened, it was just like, okay, let's work on this out. Let's just like make every line, you know, every joke worth, you know, worth uh, sharing. Um, so the last, you know, starting from, I mean, when I saw you in July of last year, I was already, I was still, I was, we hadn't locked in a date or anything yet, but I was starting to, you know, think about what that was going to be like. And then I went, I started touring in August or October of last year, just ramping up for this. Um, yeah. So it's just been, I don't know, really like going, really working on it, like consciously for maybe eight months to a year. Um, and then once it came out, I was pretty, you know, we shot it twice. We shot it in LA at the Belasco theater. And I, 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 I haven't shot an hour special before. I, I've never had a special like this where you can have so much say and, you know, um, it, you know, so many, so many, so many decisions to make as far as the backdrop, the location, how many shows, what day, just all of the, all those other details you don't really have to concern yourself with. You're just writing jokes at a mic or whatever. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, 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 shoot, what was I talking about? You're talking about the, how you shot it twice. Yeah. So the first show, there was like issues. <laughs> <laughs> the first show there was a, a power outage during my set um we had to stop that another time because it was i was i was sweating and my, my I, I forgot to take off my wristband for backstage security and it was like popping through super bright like i was in the club um and so there was interruptions and whatnot and but it was we got through it and um and and the second show was much better and much smoother but um you know, I still didn't know. It, it, there were still like, it, you know, every 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 weekend you do it at a, at a, at a um, in a, in a, on tour when you're when you're at a 
city for a weekend, there's maybe five, six shows. And out of those, one or two are like magical. I feel like for me, like that's kind of like, you know, every now and then there's like one really good show where just off the top, the first wave of laughter comes crashing so hard. You just feel like chill, like you're free. There's no fear in anything. Now you're just in the pocket, in the zone. Um, I wanted that moment, you know, I wanted that, but we, we didn't get that exactly. I think that's really hard to try to capture. Um, so I think, you know, as comedians, I'm, we're so hard on ourselves and so critical. And so when we finished taping, I didn't, I still didn't know what, what, what it was going to be. Um, and there was a bit of editing involved and, um, ultimately I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy with it. And, um, now that it's out there, I'm really grateful. Like just the response I'm getting is like, there's just so much love, so much excitement and joy and so many people sharing it. People watching multiple times, people telling me about how, how bad things are in their lives and how this one thing helped them for an hour, you know, it's pretty incredible. Nice. I'm glad you get to feel that way. And it's exciting. It's one of the things that I feel it's so different and, and that I learned from when I taped my, my hour special, it was kind of the same thing. Um, just a silly thing that, I mean, I told it when I talked to uh, Atsuko um, a couple of days ago, cause she's getting ready to tape her special for HBO. And I was like, I know this is a silly thing, but a thing that um, Bobcat, when he directed, he was just like, Oh, remember it's taped. So you can make mistakes. You can, like, and I was like, oh, wait, yeah, it doesn't have to be that, like, magical in the pocket thing. I want it to be that way. And, you know, and I feel like the second show that we had was really closer to that. But I was just, of course, I'm going to make mistakes. I'm nervous and excited. It's so weird that, like, you taping something and, like, the you've been running something for months or years and you start forgetting the wording because you're so excited about like achieving one of your goals, one of your dreams, you know? Uh, and just, and some ways I had to go back to like some of the training I had from just doing where I was like, Oh, it's, I'm so glad I've done some like silly show stuff. Like I remember doing this show called no chase called plant to needles. It was like the show on Telemundo, which is like nights with little bananas, which is this, um, late night show hosted by a clown uh -huh. and it seems like a lot of fun and everything's super excited and there's a lot of like noise and stuff and that when you actually tape it it's like 20 people all pushed to one side who are all given like one carl's jr hamburger and like they got their kids with them people are sprawled out on the bleachers and you just gotta stay focused <laughs> and keep doing it and i feel like that's the same thing as like taping a special sometimes i mean that sounds like a weird reality show like a challenge can you mm -hmm. do a set in the worst uh case possible um yeah um yeah but ultimately I, I i don't know i'm i'm i i i i think i learned a lot for the next one you mm -hmm. know um that you know that it's going to be taped like i made those mistakes as far as like i knew we can re re re, re you know re reset this the, the line and i would still like do it too quickly and not mm -hmm. give them a you know a way in to cut it or I would have a sip of water and just start talking immediately. So there's no way we can cut out that sip of water, you know? Um, so learning all those little things of like, really take the time, you know? But of course, like you said, it was, it was an exciting time and I was kind of nervous and, you know, we, you, you do it enough where like, you can, you can, you know, the words for the most part, but like it, it, it's, um, it's, yeah, it's tough to just be in the moment and enjoy it when there's this, this thing. You know? Yeah. 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 This thing that you wanted. And so good. I'm so happy that you got to have it and it turned out so well. Um, now that you're on the other side of it, does it feel good to be free and to like, I mean, I, I imagine you've been working on material for a while in between the re record mm -hmm. it and it drop, but is it nice to just be able to like write whatever you want and not worry about the framework again? Or how do you, how, how do you feel like your actual stand-up has changed from doing this the hour i don't think it's changed really that much um i think it's it's, it's i'm i'm I'm, <clears throat> I'm excited that we can i can just you know 
not do that set anymore. Like be- before the before the airing, you know, you might do it one or, once or twice again, whatever, like mm-hmm. just to work. Um, but um, yeah, I I'm kind of just continuing. Like my process is usually just writing it, writing it down. You know, random ideas and notes and I th- and thoughts, and then um, revisiting those as um, often and trying to draw or pull some something out of that um but it is a fun time to just not have um you know anything to service it's just like it's 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 pretty um yeah it's a blank canvas um i'm just right now I am, i'm really just making sure i just enjoy getting on stage and 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 yeah and just try to be free and not not worry too much about anything else um yeah i mean like i wanted to ask you like how what did your process change? You feel like after you dropped your first hour, and I mean, and 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 building like get get getting it to that point where you 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 dropped an hour and you have like you know you're building your fan base now. Like, did that change your process having your own fan base? No, I don't think my process has necessarily changed because I still write the exact same. I still do the same brainstorming way. I you know from the get go the way I write is is kind of not change. I think if anything that I've seen change, um, and this is more feedback that I've gotten from people who've seen me multiple times is that they said that my set that I have now is a little more, um, grounded and a little more, um, aggressive in some ways where I feel more confident in myself. I'm not just trying to be a people pleaser and just trying to, um, enjoy myself but as well as, you know, really try to get my point across in a precise way, but I'm more confident in my ability. That's, I think was really, cause I feel like that nervousness that you have from like achieving that goal then turns into this confidence over time of like, Oh, you can't, these are like little notches. Not that you ever get egotistical about, it, but it's just like, it's just nice to have things that people can't take away from you. And you'd be like, Oh, I've done an hour. You can't tell me that I can't do this, you know? So (laughs) there's a confidence I think that grew from that, that I really enjoy now and just things not necessarily from doing an hour, but just from like the pandemic and stuff where I feel like a loss of competition and more just enjoyment of my art and just like, um, Like I'm really big into like, I only need to do things once. Like I would love to do another special and I work towards that. But like, if I never do, that doesn't really mean anything to me. I'm not a person who's like, oh, I've got five specials, six specials. That doesn't mean anything to to do the same thing. That's like climbing the same mountain over and over again. It's the same reason like when... I initially was pitching my hour and there's some places who were like, Oh, we'll give you a half hour. I was like, Oh, it's not about the like money or exposure to me. It's about proving to myself. I can do an hour that's worthy of television and being shared. Like you said, and that's more important than like doing it for more money or doing it for more eyes. It's like proving to me. And so like, once I do that, I'm like, oh, I don't need to do five, six, seven. If I want, if I feel like I can beat what I've done, then I'm all about it. But other than that, it's like, oh, let me see what else is new that I've never done before. Right. 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 No, I feel that there's definitely still part of me that's like, what you've never done a second hour. (laughs) Like (laughs) like there's a part of me that's like, you're done, dude. I already, I, I, I gave it my all and you know, (laughs) <laughs> <I'm good. laughs> uh, you know without without the 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 next tour um where which is where you kind of you know get to get to get to make some money you know because i mean this is this is an, a great place to be like people are excited about it um but really like i i i i mean yeah until i have another hour to perform people are just you know they have they, that's all they have you know and and people are already asking for dates and and I, and I'm personally like, I, I feel the pressure I'm giving myself to like mm. do that, you know? I wonder about that. Cause you, long as I've known you, you've really worked at your own pace and you kind of done what you wanted to do. Um, and so I never really thought of you feeling pressure like that, but now that, 
I mean, people want to see you. It kind of, you feel like that you have a little bit of an obligation. I mean, uh, I'm just like I, I think for me, it's just like the the that that whole for me, it's really just um, the idea of the end, the result, mm. that one hour. You know, when you think about it in terms of having an hour, it's just like that's never going to happen. You know, like I feel like when you concentrate on that, the end. It just is too daunting to like be be productive. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, but I, but but you know, I, I I'll have those silly thoughts. I'll have you know unhelpful negative thoughts, and I'll entertain them for a while. But um, you know, I I I I I, I think um, you, ultimately you got to let that go and just focus on you know the process and today. Cha-ching. I'm just going to say it in case the sound effect doesn't come in. I imagine it will. I trust you, Hogan. Cha-ching. Ooh, I love that sound because I love spending money. But even more than that, I love saving money. And even more than that, I love making money. And that is the sound of another sale on Shopify, the all-in-one commerce platform to start, run, and grow your business. Shopify gives entrepreneurs and who among us isn't. Everyone can start a business that today and you should be. That way you can do some things with your taxes. And it gives entrepreneurs the resources once reserved for big businesses. So upstart, start up, start downs, established businesses alike can sell everywhere. Synchronize online and in-person sales and effortlessly stay informed because it's about how you access information not if you have it baby scaling your business is a journey of endless possibility this podcast and myself i sell so much i just try to sell t-shirts posters we're doing all types of things and i'm not stopping there i'm gonna grow my business i'm set in goals success is full of a million milestones and i am forging my path and when i'm done it's gonna be a beautiful walkway in front of my second mansion that's what my plan is hopefully lord willing let's get there (laughs) now Uh, and just like my business, Shopify powers millions of businesses from sale to full scale. Reach your customers online, across social networks, and an ever-growing suite of channel integration and apps. Talking Facebook, we're talking Instagram, we're talking TikTok, we're talking Pinterest. You got to cast a wide net if you want to grab people. Synchronize your online and in-person sales. Gain insights uh, as you grow so you can track your progress, your conversion rates, your profit margins, and beyond. On it is more than a store as Shopify grows with you. This is not just your life and your livelihood and just you with a little mom and pop restaurant. This is possibility powered by Shopify. Just go to Shopify.com slash Funches, all lowercase, to start your free trial and get full access to Shopify's entire suite of features. Grow your business with Shopify today. Go to Shopify.com slash Funches right now. Now, that is again, Shopify.com slash Funches. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's just simple stuff as far as like just looking at it one step at a time. Just do just one bit, one joke. And just like it's one thing I like about it when you've done that hour, there is that side that feels the pressure to like be able to recreate or you know, go on tour so you don't show people that same hour again, you know, but there's also, I just feel like you love comedy and you got into comedy because you like to write comedy. So you're going to write more jokes and you're going to get, have more observations naturally. And the fact that you've done this thing now, just sharpen your skill level for you to turn around and be able to do it. Um, with more of a mastery level and and with more precision and in some cases faster. Um, I just feel like that can be a big positive for you because you're really good. You're like, you know, every time you're always, you know, you're one of the people that like comedians backstage watch. And that's usually rare. Like me, you know, you know, my buddy Gabe and stuff like you're like one of his favorites. You're one of my favorites. Like whenever you're around, it's always just, (laughs) 
fun to see how your mind works because you usually write things that I w- would never think of. And it's so, I mean, and that's just fun to watch. So I, you know, I wouldn't worry about it. Thanks, man. All right. I won't worry about it. Hell yeah. <laughs> Stop it. Stop that worrying. Um, you, yeah. You and Cat Williams should do a hair off and a special. Just that. Just you two posing with uh, your hair. I, um, yeah, my home, my, my friend wanted me to do, make it more <laughs> cats like, um, what's going on? What else is going on with me? Yeah. I just got the baby, you know? Yeah. Four, congrats. Thank you. He's four months. So that's been fun. He's getting ready to go visit his, uh, extended family. So I'm going to not see him for a couple of weeks, which I'm not excited about i am happy to get a little more rest maybe but i'm going i already miss him and them miss him and my wife already already so i'm not going i'm not excited about it uh but life-wise just real been real happy real uh, trying to work on my health and stuff just happy beautiful man i'm happy for you dude I'm, i'm i'm proud of you and i'm that sounds awesome um you're, this is your second child. Mm-hmm. And so you're being a dad, like, sort of, I don't know. But this, does this feel very different this time around? Yeah. <laughs> like, just because of where different. you are? Yeah. It's just to be, I mean, I was talking to another friend earlier today, but just to, like, not be counting how many diapers I have. To just be like, oh, if we're getting, if it looks like we're getting low, we'll just buy some, another case, you know? Right. And that, that's way different as opposed to being like, we're down to five. All right. I got to do this. Maybe I got to put them through the self-checkout aisle and turn them into vegetables (laughs) so I can put them on food stamps, you know? (laughs) So that is a different, which, you know, is it. It's very stressful, but it was fun to still figure out stuff and be crafty. And I had a lot of more energy then. Now I'm like, oh, we can do it, but I'm tired. Right, right. right. <laughs> <laughs> and also now more like I, you talk about like the end result as in like putting together an hour and more like I've been looking at things like a NBA player who had his first major knee blowout. And I'm like, oh my God, like, Oh, I don't know if I I already know what it was like when I put my first son through having to watch me go on the road all the time and come back home. And I don't know if I want to put my new son through that again. So I see this like and I'm trying to create a road where I can stay home more and like just whether act or host things or do fun stuff because I like it. I enjoy it. And it's part of me that never thought. I would be like that. I would always thought I'd be like, oh, I want to be a road dog. And every week I want to be getting better at comedy and stand up. But the more I do other things, the more I learn that I do get better. The more I host, I get better at stand up. The stand up gets me better at acting. The acting gets me better at stand up. It all feeds back into each other. And then it kind of goes back to this thing that you said before. And the thing that I always felt with you is like the ultimate goal for me is to be free and to follow my heart wherever it wants to go. So if I want to go do this, is why I did a pro wrestling match is why yeah. I do whatever, you know, cause I'm like, if I feel like I really want to do it, I want to try it. Cause I don't have life is, is finite. So That's so beautiful, man. I'm so happy you did that, dude. That was awesome. Thank you. I don't know anything about that world, but I saw that. I saw a clip of you in the ring and that blew my mind. dude. It was a really fun time and it was scary and I enjoyed it. <laughs> It's so cool. Would you do that again? Or are you done? I would do it again, possibly, but it would have to, whatever it is, has to be grander scale than the last time. I'm not trying to like hit the road and just go do shots for <laughs> like right. just Ron versus random wrestler at, you know, yeah. uh, Elks Lodge. I'm not trying to do that. And that's what's going to happen if I do it, you know, regularly. Right, right, right. That's cool, man. That's cool that you tried it. Yeah. Um, what have you been trying? What, anything new in your life? Or any new hobbies or things you're excited about? Man, I'm pretty boring, dude. I'm still just on this food. And I mean, lately, I feel like um, 
I mean, I, I think this is something I've been sharing with a lot of comedians, but like, I'm just, I'm just been into getting into pl- plants. <laughs> I, this is my my way of trying to make this look less bomb sultry yeah, plant, in here. Yeah, nice, plant, look at you. Yeah, little money tree. Yeah, little money tree. Yeah. yeah, that's lovely. What's that? Is it green on the bottom? Is that moss down there? Yeah, it's moss. Ooh, that is nice. I love moss. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I love the Pacific Northwest, dude. Olympia National Park. All the it's all wet and green up there. It's beautiful from it pulling is. up. Gorgeous. Yeah. It's Silver Creek Falls is a beautiful area. Yeah. Wow. So I'm just know. getting into plants. That's the kind of like, I mean, I've always kind of, I've just been trending that way for the last 10 years, I guess. Um, And I have like kind of what I do when I hit, when I'm on tour is the, <laughs> I have a, I have a membership. It's like one of the, one, one botanical garden and um, they're all networked. So if you have one, you have, if you if you're if you're a member of one, you're a member to like three three hundred fifty across the country or something like that. Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah, so it's like completely worth it. I mean, every time anytime you go to one of those, you know, a, a city that almost all the all of them will have all the medium big ones will have like a nice botanical garden, and I, I find it to be just incredibly um, just joyful and therapeutic to be in there, dude. Um, I'm I'm. Yeah, I'm just like I, I love paying attention to plants and the details and 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 all their characteristics and you know the vibe that they're giving off. Um, they all have very, especially if you go into the desert garden. Like if you live in LA, go to the Huntington Garden. Their desert garden is amazing, um, and it just because those plants look crazy. You know, they're they're living in extreme situations, and they all look kind of wild, and all they'll have different ways of dealing with it. Um, but it looks like they look like a, they look like a like a, a scene at a party, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and I just I I find plants to be grounding for me. When I, you know, going going for walks, of course, I love. I think a lot of comedians take walks to get, get their mind clear their mind or whatever, um, and write. And um, I'm out there also on these walks, just just noticing, you know, paying attention. Um, yeah, that's really what I've been like most excited about these days. Um, plants. I want my my, <laughs> my dream is like go make some friends that are botanists, you know, and mm-hmm. go to like just just go go for a walk and just let them tell me everything that there is and find stuff, you know, forage or whatever, and you see some mushrooms. I just go out there and 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 be, you know. I mean, I don't need that. Like, I definitely am just like impressed by the way they are, just way you know, with 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 my ignorance or my the mystery of what what what's happening there. Um, but it is fun when 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 you're with somebody that's knowledgeable. And I, you know, I, when I when I go out with comedians, I'll pretend like I know something because um, most people don't. <laughs> I don't. People don't. I, I have no clue. But I love listening to you talk about it. I love it when you're passionate about that type of stuff. It makes me get excited for 10 minutes thinking that I'm going to get a membership to a botanical garden before I eventually go, I forgot everything we were talking about. (laughs) So then I I just go back to living my regular life. But I'm sure you affected at least one person to go get a membership to a botanical garden. I'm going to remind you, dude. I'm going to follow up with you. I think you'll like. I think you'll like it. I, don't know. I think about it, I'm like my wife. I'm like we're trying to do a date night every Tuesday. So now I'm like, oh, botanical. I think she would love that. Yeah. I like. I always like. I like walking around the garden at the at the Getty. If you ever go to the Getty, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's lovely out there. Um, yeah. yeah, then you would love this. Um, I mean, the Huntington is is just stunning. And then the, next to it, a, a few miles down, is the LA Arboretum, and that that is equally awesome. Um, it's cheaper. And it has a little bit different vibe, but um, like the, the Huntington is just, you know, they've got money and it costs more and it, it feels a little bit more um, manicured, just a little bit, but it's still pretty wild and fun. And and, and, and yeah, those are, either one is great. Um, yeah. Fun times. Shane, one of the segments we have on this podcast that we do every time is that we get into goals. And I know you've really just accomplished a big major goal, so you might not 
have something that you're like, this is exactly what I'm working on. But um, if you have anything, whether it's health wise, philosophy wise, just your soul, um, career, family, whatever you're willing mm. to share. Yeah. Um, what are you working on? Um, I mean, I, 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 I I'm, I'm, there's things that I'm working on that I feel like, um, I don't even want to like say it because I feel like it's the same thing, <laughs> and then it's 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 almost shameful to just be what I'm just trying to drink and smoke a little bit less, mm-hmm. be more moderate about that, um, and I'm also I'm also trying to eat more vegan in my life, but not see that thing about that is I'm not even I'm for most of these goals I'm not trying that hard like. Mm. As well, I, well, I was about to invite you to an infused weed dinner party, and so maybe I shouldn't. No, let's go. let's go. You want to go? Yeah, Are go. you free the seventeenth? Because I'm doing a comedy show dinner party. If you want to do the comedy show, then they are also going to do a five course infused dinner from like TV <laughs> Michelin chefs. It's cool. Wow, that sounds awesome, dude. I would do that. I, I think I'm flying out on the seventeenth. Just, just oh no, just personal well, travel. Maybe I'll do a second one. We'll see. Yeah, but we'll, let me know. I will. I think you would love it. It's a good. It feels like a vacation whenever I've, I've gone to these. events. Events. So I wanted to add comedy to them and, show, and have my friends come by. Yeah, that sounds nice, man. Thank you. Yeah, I would love to. Um, yeah, that sounds awesome, man. Uh, wait, what were, what goals. Were goals. Goals. Double goals. It's drinking and smoking less. And let, smoke less. Just, but whatever. Like, uh. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I feel like all of us are trying to do that, sort of. Mm-hmm. Not me. I'm Not trying me. to smoke more. <laughs> <laughs> like like I, I've been like I guess what I'm saying is like like I've been trying to, to eat be, trying to be more vegan but it's really I keep it vague you know mm-hmm. so it's not really like it doesn't really happen <laughs> I just try to eat healthier I've been really trying to stay away from sugar this month which has been a, a good progress. It started off, if it really seems to be affected to travel with me. I feel like I associate a lot of travel with trying new foods and going to different places. Like if I'm in New York, I'm like, I gotta get a slice of pizza and yeah. some pudding. Yeah. You gotta Wait, get pizza pudding. and pudding. I didn't know. I didn't know New York was about that pudding. Pizza and pudding when in New York. <laughs> Everyone says it. The P and P. Right, right, right. Of course. Yeah. Classic. The P and P. Yeah, the Magnolia pudding, which they have it now in LA as well. But yes. Yeah. And it I just good. love a banana pudding. So yes. but when I stay home, I figure I can focus more, which is another reason why I'm trying to stay home, is that I keep no like I'm starting to try to blame myself less and be more like, oh, this job is just difficult. I go to bed late. I'm around all this food. They always want to think, you know, I work out every time I go out and I try to do my best, but inevitably I end up eating some horrible, gum, not horrible, horrible gummy <laughs> snacks, which in doing something I shouldn't food wise. And so I'm like, man, I really got to, What's best for me is it's like just staying home and doing shows at like Best Fish Taco or doing whatever. You right. Know? It's fun. right. <laughs> That's a yummy place to do shows. Yeah. Um man, yeah. I was I was traveling. It's so hard. It is so hard. It is so it's so easy to be tempted and to fall for it. Cause especially if you're on the road for a while, like you're 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 it's just I I was I was in Montreal and they they booked me for the the one show that starts very early in the festival, I was there for like three weeks hmm. and I ate poutine like 12 times. <laughs> I, th- I was there for 18 days and I ate poutine 12 times. And I, and it wasn't like I would go to the fan. It wasn't like I was at a, at a nice, I was going to like, the dirty, the dirty places, <laughs> you know, like it's just gross. It's, it's the food's so good, but, but it, the place is, it's sad. It's a sad place. Mm-hmm. It's dingy. It's dark. The workers have dirty hands. They look like pervy men. 
Um, but I'll get I'll eat that I'll eat their poutine. Yeah, that's why I stay away day. from New Orleans because that's all I wanted to eat po' boys and establishments that look like I'll get shot at. That sounds about right, though. That's mm-hmm. I gotta go there. You are you there often? No, it's been years. The last time was for wrestling, for WrestleMania. But it was still to this day one of the greatest trips of my life because it was a, it's a small city and then you fill it with wrestling fans who I am. So then I don't feel as scared. Uh-huh. And then there's just delicious food everywhere. And then I went and saw a basketball game. It was a great time. Sounds and then great. some anti- antiquing. Man, that's solid. That is, yeah. Antiquing on top of all that. Mm-hmm. Do you bring home stuff? It's like no. you got to make sure it's small. Yeah. No, just looking. Usually don't. It, it had to be something magical for me to pick it up. Right. Um, I usually maybe get a video game or two for my son when I'm on the road. Uh, but other than that, I just, I mean, I'm very, bo- I mean, again, that's one reason I like hanging around with you is usually you make me live more of a life on the road. Because if not, I'm like, I'm just staying in the hotel all day and I'll work out. I'll take a nap. I'll buy a, a bowl of some delicious meat, veggie food thing. And then I'm good to do the show and yeah. Then yeah. come back, play video games, smoke weed, pass out. It's a beautiful life. That's not bad. That's not mm. bad. I mean, yeah, but if you can mix it up with like a trip to the botanical garden on one day, that'd be nice. So I, I'll, I'll do uh, my thing is botanical gardens, museums, whatever. And then if there's a cool mini golf course, Mm-hmm. I'm in on that. Um, what are your favorite? Do you ever go to the Sherman Oaks Castle one? No, I never been there. I, I, it's pretty fun. It's not like super like wild, but it's a solid hang. That sounds nice. They got it's it's, it's an eighteen hole mini mini golf course. They got three courses. Oh so, yeah. Dang. Okay. I, I'm. I, I got to check that out. I got. I mean, yeah. Three courses sounds like a a, a lot of. A lot of golf, a lot of mini golf. Um, it's fun. The place is shaped as a castle. It's a, you know, it's, it's classic. That sounds perfect, dude. A, ca- a castle, <laughs> a four to five mini golf course. <laughs> <laughs> um, in San Antonio, there's a beautiful golf course uh, called the Cool Crest. Mm. Um, it's been there since 1929. It's got like an Art Deco kind of vibe, and it's got all just vegetation throughout it. It's got a beer garden. You can grab a beer, play mini golf, and the, the 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 they have two 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 courses, and they're all really well designed. You really just want a garden and everything you do. I like that. <laughs> it's a bonus, you know. Uh, also for the shade, mm, when you're yeah. in hot, when you, when it's hot, you know, global warming is a thing, right? So it seems plants. to be. It appears to be. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. All right. Let's see if there's anything else that I want to ask you. Mm. Anything else you want to ask me? That'd be fun. Um, like- did you? Well, how? Yeah, I mean, after I guess. Did you after your first special? Did you find it? What was challenging for you after that? Like that you didn't think it was going to be a problem, or that just took you by surprise? Or I don't know what. It, yeah, what was um after your first special? Like. Uh, you know, you're excited after the excitement of it's already come out. Mm-hmm. Um, what was a, I mean, just being like knowing when, cause I look at a lot of it, whether you're like, Oh, if I got booked for a show or I, I got it, I'm getting to do an hour. They're all like, we're in the, the the line for a roller coaster, right? And we get on it and it's super fun and we're excited. Some of us choose to fold our arms and act like it's not fun, you know? But if you've done it more than once, you'd be like, oh, it is fun. I'm going to get back in line and stuff, you know? And I think the hardest part was just the knowing when the ride was done for you and you got to get back in line and get back to work, you mm. know? And that was... Um, and and because you you know it's just such a big deal for you personally you know especially if you're a lover of comedy like I am you know it's just a, a marker of things that I wanted since as a kid so to then that'd be like where like oh okay well somebody else has a special now and nobody you know some people care about mine and they'll bring it up and they'll talk about it it'll be a list or whatever you know but like overall it's just like well. 
that's again a marker in the fact that like it's cool but no one can take it away from me but overall i just have to get back to work and and and, and create more um and that was a little bit difficult and then technical wise it was just knowing me and knowing that i write about like my life and um real personal was to have to be like okay i'm gonna, i know i'm going to continue to write in the same vein but to try to my best to not like recreate similar jokes, mm. you know? Right. Right. I, 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 somebody was saying how we kind of just all write the same hour over and over in different, mm-hmm. different mm-hmm. presentation. Um, but so you mean like you were just having too much fun. Like you didn't know when it's time to get back to work. Cause it was just like, you were, you just felt like you had done this thing and you, you were just giving yourself time to just not be. No or just like mentally just ego wise mm. where I would go out to clubs and I'd be like, people all see my hour and they're excited. And then I'd be like, no, <laughs> <laughs> no. Meaning like you got to bring something else to the yeah, table. <laughs> exactly. Right, right, right. <laughs> right. Okay. And that's fine. And that's fun. But that's, you know, sometimes I just like, why aren't we all celebrating still? <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> still people that haven't seen it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. That's funny. Well, it's fun. I just like, uh, it's just fun. It's super cool that you got to do it. Like you said, first hour is, is just, Something nobody could take away from you and to do it and have Ali direct it and, and so many people be able to see it and it looks so beautiful. It's, oh. it's, a, it's great. Thanks, man. Yeah, that was that was really a, a thing that Ali like kind of um, reminded me, you know, you know, when I was in my when I, again, when I was like thinking about how to make this special, a special. Um, you know, her whole thing was just like, just do what you do. We're going to keep it pretty simple basic kind of classic uh stand up special and like the 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 experimental or the wild part is that it's you telling your jokes you know mm-hmm. so um just she just wanted to focus on just me and 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 my, and, the, and the act um and so like even even you know when we first started talking about it there was like oh with, with the backdrop with, with, oh, I, I had this like abstract idea of like uh something with nature Maybe like, um, you know, speckle lighting from in a forest or something. I don't know. I just had we just we were just think, brainstorming, and ultimately I was like, let's just keep it as simple as possible, you know. So we went with that red curtain, and and yeah, I just had a few things. I, I wanted to just keep it very basic and very like it could almost be any time this century, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and I think that was. I mean, Ali had kind of helped, you know. Um, Trust that that was the, the 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 thing to do, and 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 ultimately, I think it it it, it worked out. You know. No, I agree. Yeah. Sometimes simple is the best, and it allows the jokes to really just be observed. And when you do that, you know, there's 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 nothing faulty in those. So it's really just simple and beautiful. So I really I hope everybody go check it out. Um, is it usually we end by just asking for a little pearl of wisdom, a little nugget of advice, a little something maybe you learn from doing the hour, maybe something from your childhood, who knows, whatever sparks to your mind, just something to help our getting better community to get better. Um, I mean... Kind of what I'm doing to remind, I mean, this is not, this is not, you know, this is, I'll just remind folks this piece of thing, like the idea that this too shall pass, you know, whether it's good or bad, whether it's pain or a suffering or loss or whatever, or it's a high uh, uh, from, from releasing your first special, like, uh, and, and all, all this, all this is going to pass. Um, I'm, 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 I, yeah. So I'm just, you know, absolutely grateful and excited for it, but I'm also trying to stay grounded and not get too, you know, caught up in all of that because <laughs> like you said, you know, at, at some point the, the, the party's over, it'll end. Right. And, um, uh, yeah. 
and I, yeah, it's just something I'm just reminding myself, um, even in good times, I think, you know, especially, of course, we know that it's, it's I mean, no, it's, it's, it's good to remind yourself in both good and bad. It's what I'm saying. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's one of my favorites is it's really helped me in, in bad times when I first moved to Los Angeles when I was getting divorced and I didn't thought I was going to live with my aunt and I get, ended up getting kicked out in like two, a week and didn't know where I was going to live and was just couch surfing and figuring things out. And I remember I went and did a comedy show and it was written on the wall. This too shall pass. And I was like, I fucking hope so. And, and it and it did. And it really is a reminder. I mean, again, it's just a reminder to be grateful and to um, appreciate all the moments because they all move and they all fade away especially as i am a dad for the second time i'm I'm well more aware of watching like every inch that my son grows and that he changes and that is a ticking time bomb from me even to be able to pick him up and hold him mm-hmm. you know and and that's some of my favorite parts of life is just having my little son's feet in my hand you know yeah that's such a, a fun and unique experience and so I just try to be aware of it because that that too will pass. So I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Where can people find you and watch your special, Shang? Um, I mostly on Instagram at Shang Wing Time. Um, I, the special is on Netflix. It's called Sweet and Juicy. And it's streaming now. People go check it out. It is hilarious. I don't feel like you could find a better special to watch or a better way to spend an hour of your time. It'll make you feel better and feel happy if you're feeling blue. So check it out. It's a Ron Funches guarantee. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for coming, Shaq. Thank you, Ron. Thank you so much. Of course, it's great brother. to see you. you. Always a pleasure. I love you. One of my favorite people. Thank you for spending time with us. Thank you for coming. Thank you guys for listening. Bye. If you enjoyed this episode, please check out our last episode right over here. Bam! Or perhaps a video picked by our overlords at YouTube. Boop. And don't forget to subscribe. Hit it up. Hit it up. Press the button. Press it!